Welcome to Qatar Career Development Center's webinar series, a new virtual initiative that aims to continue delivering much needed services in the field of career guidance to all our stakeholders. My name is Efrasini Dimitrios, and I have the privilege to work with QCDC for the last eight years as a Senior Career Programs and Services Officer. Together with Jacqueline Nottingham from Qatar Foundation's Academic Bridge Program, we will navigate today's session with our esteemed panel guests and viewers. This webinar is the second of a set of live webinars to be delivered in the coming period, including an Arabic webinar next Wednesday, July 15. To set the tone for today's session, I would like to start with some useful information for our esteemed attendees. Uh, first of all, this webinar is recorded and it will be shared with you together with the presentation and the other handout files with contact details. We appreciate your active participation through questions that you can type in the chat box. Today's webinar will start with an introduction about QCDC and our seven distinguished panel guests. We will move to a brief overview of the educational institutions that are operating in Qatar under the approval of the Ministry of Education and Higher Education, followed by panelist presentations, and then we will dedicate around 15 to 20 minutes to answer your questions. Before closing the event, we will provide you with an event survey. Please take the time to fill it as your opinion is of much value to us. As our current engagement has shifted in the virtual realm, we invite you to answer the coming poll and give you the opportunity to introduce yourselves. We will have one more minute, so please make sure to put your answers. Excellent. Can we look at the results? Thank you all for voting. Now, a few words about us. The Qatar Career Development Center, or QCDC, is a member of Qatar Foundation under the Community Development Division with the mission to empower Qatar's youth to respond to the requirements of the National Vision 2030 by instilling career guidance within Qatar's socioeconomic culture. QCDC supports students to better plan their career paths in line with their potential and the future needs of Qatar's labor market. It also equips parents and career practitioners with career guidance knowledge and information needed so they may best advise and guide the students. QCDC also aims to enrich and support career guidance policy making and practices by contributing to quality career literature, insights and consulting, as well as offering high career uh, services, high quality career services by professional experts. Today we are delighted to host an all-female panel with seven exceptional ladies. Ms. Hivla Raisi, Student Recruitment Specialist from the College of North Atlantic, Qatar. Ms. Mariam Lachine, Associate Director of Admissions from Georgetown University. Ms. Samantha Way Jenkins, uh, Country Manager and Admissions Director from Global Studies Institute. Ms. Hanan Hindi, Admissions Specialist from Northwestern University in Qatar. Ms. Jana Alokar, Student Life and Awards Coordinator from University of Calgary in Qatar, Ms. Claudia Mihaescu, Assistant Director for Admissions from Royal Cornell Medicine Qatar, 
and Ms. Melissa Deschamps, who is the Regional Educational Advising Coordinator from Education USA. So let's break the ice before we dive into the very interesting presentations with one more poll question. Uh, please uh, tell us how many universities and colleges are operating currently in Qatar? We'll give another minute for this poll. Thank you all for voting. So presented in alphabetical order, there are actually 22 approved tertiary institutions, uh, but they are operating locally under the approval of the Ministry of Education and Higher Education. Uh, first is the Academic Bridge Program, which has an American-based curriculum and is a pre-university based uh, program under the Qatar Foundation Pre-University Education Division. The AFC College with the University of Aberdeen from Scotland offer majors in accountancy, finance, business management, international commercial law. The Carnegie Mellon University also from the US with majors in biological sciences, business administration, computational biology, computer science, information systems. A City College that concentrates in vocational studies, offering certificates and diplomas in business and computing the College of North Atlantic from Canada, with various, uh, various programs to be explained soon in details. Uh, Community College of Qatar, which also has an American-based curriculum with various programs and available for Qataris and children of Qatari mothers. Georgetown University, which is another US-based reputed institution uh, and is part of today's presentations. The Global Studies Institute, uh, which is the latest addition to the approved list uh, of universities and their presentation will follow soon. Hamad bin Khalifa University, our homegrown uh, brand, uh, which is part of Qatar Foundation, with majors in computer engineering and graduate studies, and Lucille University, which is another new academic institution that will open their doors this coming academic year, with majors in law, oil, uh, oil and gas management, uh, marketing and distribution technology, French uh, studies, and teaching English. And I will pass the floor to my colleague, Ms. Jacqueline Nottingham, and she can follow with the rest of the presentation. So we also have other schools uh, in Qatar uh, that are part of the Ministry of Education's approved list. Those include Northumbria University, which focuses on banking, insurance, finance, accounting, marketing and asset management. Northwestern University, which is an American-based university, it's part of Qatar Foundation, which offers communications and journalism. Oryx Universal College, which is new to Qatar and is based from the UK and in collaboration with Liverpool John Moores. They're offering civil engineering, computer science, and quantity surveying. We have Qatar Aeronautical Academy, which focuses on pilot training and offers other uh, opportunities. Qatar University, which has a number of various programs. <clears throat> Stenden University, which is based in the Netherlands and offers international business, international hospitality management and tourism management. Texas A&M University, which is another American-based school, which is a part of Qatar Foundation, offering chemical engineering, electrical and computer engineering, mechanical engineering, and petroleum engineering. We have University Foundation College, which is a UK-based university preparatory program. The University of Calgary from Canada, which offers nursing. Ulster University, which is a new partner with City College and is UK-based from Ireland. They focus on business studies and also international foundation diploma along with computing technologies. Virginia Commonwealth University, 
which is an American-based school, uh, again, part of Qatar Foundation, offering art history, fashion design, graphic design, interior design, painting and printmaking. And finally, we have Weill Cornell Medical College, which is again from the United States, offering the Doctor of Medicine. First up today, we have Ms. Heba al Raisi. She is a student recruitment specialist from the College of the North Atlantic, and she's gonna share some information with us. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, virtual house. Uh, and uh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I'm Heber Raisi uh, from the College of North Atlantic Qatar. I'm the student uh, recruitment specialist. And today I'll just give you a brief about the college and also the requirements and uh, the registration process. Uh, so let's start. So the College of North Atlantic, uh, basically it's a technical college, which means uh, you're in an education environment. But uh, the, what uh, makes us special is that uh, when you study there, you feel like that you are, you are in the, in the uh, work market. So you have the opportunity to study and also feel that you are working. And also after you finish your uh, diploma, uh, you get the chance to work in an actual environment without having any difficulties because you already have been studying and uh, implementing at the same time at the college. And uh, first of all, we're going to uh, talk about our programs. So we offer, uh, as uh, I mentioned, uh, for now uh, diploma uh, programs and we have uh, four different schools. The first school that we uh, have is the uh, business school and uh, the IT school, uh, the school of business and uh, 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 information technology. Also we have the school of engineering and uh, also we have the school of health science. These are the four schools that we offer at the College of North Atlantic. And uh, for the admission requirements, it's very simple. Uh, it's very simple for the business and uh, IT. So basically, we need the, the high school diplo uh, the high school uh, transcript uh, uh, with with the minimum of sixty percent or above. And also, we need uh, English and uh, mathematics, either academic uh, or advanced. Uh, and also three uh, ad additional uh, academic courses, uh, which total uh, five courses and should be, uh, the average should be a minimum of 60%. As for the requirements of the engineering and the health science, uh, it's the, uh, almost the same with a little bit of, uh, it has a bit uh, uh, different. Uh, so basically you need also the high school transcript, which is 60% uh, uh, or above. And also you need, as I mentioned before, English uh, and uh, mathematics. And you need, in, especially in these majors, you need uh, to have science subjects which are either chemistry, biology, or uh, physics. Total of five subjects, and it should be uh, average minimum of uh, 60%. Uh, uh, and also the programs that we offer, the, the branches of, uh, of these programs, uh, like we have five different um, uh, sub majors in the in the engineering department, and also in the health science field, we have a lot of uh, sub uh, majors. You can check them on the website, and also the business and the information technology. Uh, the registration process is very simple. Uh, you 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 can register it online. Uh, registration is now open until the 26th of July. You need the high school transcript. A uh, copy of your passport, copy of your ID, and uh, upload them with the app uh, and the application. Uh, for the high school uh, transcript, if you're coming from a private school uh, or from outside Qatar, you need uh, to validate this. Um, you need to validate your um, high school transcript uh, equivalent from the Ministry of uh, Education. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, 
registration if you have any questions regarding uh, any uh, requirements or any specific uh, things regarding programs uh, please do in the Q&A uh, uh, box and also I want I want to refer that the uh, the, uh, the prices for the uh, for the admissions and each program for for all programs is 20,000 uh, reals. So that's basically it for our whole uh, process of entering the College of North Atlantic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. Next up, we have Georgetown University and Miriam Locken. She's the Associate Director of Admissions. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, thanks, Jacqueline. Uh, my name is Mariam. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Georgetown University in Qatar. Georgetown University in Qatar is an additional location of Georgetown University, which is based in Washington, D.C. Our campus in Qatar was established in 2005, and since then we've been offering a four-year undergraduate program in international affairs that leads to the Bachelor of Science in Foreign Service degree. As you can see on the slide, um, students at Georgetown have the opportunity to select one of our four majors, culture and politics, international economics, international history, and international politics. Um, now they may all sound very similar, so I'll kind of give you a little bit of a background on what students may study in each of those four majors. In international economics, students might evaluate the effects of something like COVID-19 pandemic on uh, global oil and gas prices in businesses across countries. Uh, our students might take a closer look at government interventions and economic policies that have been designed to support the economy and help companies and small businesses survive when it's been um, a very serious economic downturn due to COVID-19. It's easy to see a value of um, an international economics degree when you understand the kinds of ways our graduates contribute to government, um, governments, companies, and other organizations. Uh, in international politics, our students study how individual states and organizations may cooperate for mutual gain, as they do, for example, in the Gulf Cooperation Council or the GCC, and how they may compete, um, as has been the case with the blockade. Uh, whether it's working for a gov government ministry or advising a uh, CEO of a global oil firm on political risks, our students or a degree in international politics opens many doors for our students. The culture and politics major is one that's designed to provide students uh, with an understanding of the relationship between culture, knowledge, and power. Um, culture is a very broad term and one that covers everything from arts and language to um, what could be described as um, elements of religion or society or literature and more. Here in Qatar, we see uh, various ex expressions of culture um, and its effect on the society from museums and the arts within them to the diversity of the population in Qatar. Um, what effects does a national museum have on a country's identity? Um, why is it important to uh, preserve culture uh, while innovating within a society? Those are types of questions that our students explore um, and more, of course, in the major like culture and politics. And finally, how will we remember uh, the time of the blockade? Um, how will we reevaluate the effects uh, or the impact or the consequences of a pandemic such as COVID-19 10 years from now? Um, how, do, how can we understand the effects of a country's museums on its national identity or its growing influence in the world? These are the kinds of questions that our international historians will engage um, at Georgetown. Um, students identify and trace major themes and issues and developments in global history and can develop questions and their own analysis and arguments, and most importantly, advice um, on different, um, about different societies and, and, and issues and, and cultures, of course. All of this, um, and students can also choose to further specialize with a minor or a certificate. We offer uh, certificates, uh, which are, as I mentioned, further specializations, um, if I may say so, in American studies, Arab and regional studies, and media and politics with our sister university, uh, Northwestern, um, who's also here today. 
Uh, we offer a variety of, of minors as well, and those can further complement a student's um, academic journey here at the university. Our application will reopen uh, on September 1st. So for those of you who are interested in um, learning more about Georgetown University, for those of you who are interested in studying international affairs or joining nearly 400 students from over 50 nationalities or 50 countries, um, these are our application details on the right hand side of the screen. Um, the application, as I mentioned, will reopen on September 1st um, and the deadline is February 1. So far, our requirements are still the same, uh, pretty standard and an online application, recommendation letters, transcripts for the last three years of high school and tests, SAT and AC or ACT, as well as an English language proficiency exam. Uh, so IELTS, TOEFL or Duolingo. Um, we are currently uh, reviewing our standardized testing policy and there may be some changes uh, moving forward. Um, so we'll obviously post those updates on our website. If you have any questions, we'll obviously be um, here till the end um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions in the Q&A. Uh, but you can also feel free to send us an email um, at sfsqadmissions at georgetown.edu. Um, and I'll also be sharing on the chat the link to our mailing list. Um, if you'd like to join our mailing list to learn more, receive updates, announcements, and invitations to our programs and workshops and events, um, that would also be great. So I'll just send that link out on the chat um, and please feel free to join the mailing list and I'll be here later on to answer your questions as well. Thank you. Thanks, Miriam. Next up, we have Ms. Samantha Way Jenkins, and she's the Country Manager and Admissions Director for the Global Studies Institute in Qatar. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Samantha, and I'm the Country Manager of Global Studies Institute. Before starting, I'd like to thank you all for attending and also thank the QCDC for organizing this event. I think the title of this webinar, What Happens Next, may well be the catchphrase of 2020. So what does happen next? What opportunities are there for you? Well, opportunity is actually what defines our offering. The Ministry of Education has approved live delivery in Qatar of undergraduate and graduate programs offered by prestigious US and UK universities from September onwards. The programs are managed by us, the Global Studies Institute, and we're based here in Doha in the Aspire Zone. Bringing together world-class universities and utilizing a technology platform that allows real-time live instruction and facilitates a learning environment that has never been done before is truly a remarkable milestone in advancing higher education here in Qatar. Our aim at Global Studies Institute is to promote education by providing quality educational programs at all levels, associates, bachelors, masters, and also professional development to citizens and residents at the state-of-the-art facilities within the Aspire Zone. These programs from our university partners will be offered using real-time, highly interactive and content-rich format delivered through Shorelight Technology. Starting this September 2020, our initial offering is the associate degree courses offered by our partner, the State University of New York, Adirondack. The State University of New York Adirondack will offer live to classroom courses in our facilities in the Aspire Zone. It's the same offering carrying the exact same credentials as if you were on campus at SUNY in the US and is accredited by the Ministry of Education of Qatar. This is an offer full of opportunity. It's an opportunity because as a SUNY student, you will have access to the largest system of public higher education in the United States, the State University of New York. You'll have the same access to resources, to faculty, student welfare and support, among other things. It's an opportunity because SUNY Adirondack caters to all types of students. For example, high school graduates like yourselves, adults who want to further their education, students who maybe did not do so well at high school, and all with a streamlined admissions procedure. It's an opportunity because SUNY Adirondack courses form the foundation of many different degrees and technical training, leading to a wide diverse range of career paths. It's an opportunity because the live classroom technology brings SUNY professors to Qatar in real time, interacting with you in the classroom in an environment that is proven to be more effective than regular face-to-face -face instruction. 
Our facilities in the Aspire Zone include offices, classrooms, libraries, study areas and cafeterias. It's an opportunity because GSI in partnership with Sunni Adirondack will provide local support to you as a Sunni student here in Qatar, in addition to the help you'll get from the State University of New York itself. This will enable you to get the best education, the best academic support, the best career guidance for your individual needs. It's an opportunity because you can start at Sunny Adirondack and then continue there to associates level or transfer credits and continue in other Sunni universities in the United States, universities in Education City, Qatari universities and many other US universities. It's an opportunity because the value proposition is significant getting the same education and experience for a fraction of the cost of studying in the United States for the same qualifications. And it's an opportunity because the courses are taught by the same faculty that teach at SUNY campus in New York. It's a US learning style experience. By the way, classes will be held in the afternoons here so we don't make the faculty in New York get up too early. The admissions are open now until the 3rd of September and you can book an appointment to come and discuss your opportunities with us and we will support you in your admissions process directly with SUNY. The requirements are high school completion certificate and IELTS of six or above. You can visit our website for more information or contact us by email or phone. We look forward to welcoming you to the State University of New York Adirondack here in Qatar. Many thanks. Thank you, Samantha. Next up, we have Ms. Hanan Hindi, She's the Admissions Specialist at Northwestern University. Hi everyone, I'm excited to be here and thank you so much for joining us, whether you're a parent, student, or a counselor. Um, so I'm the Admissions Specialist at Northwestern University here in Qatar. And uh, our university offers um, programs mostly in liberal arts. So we offer journalism, communications, and a liberal arts degree. Um, our degrees are very hands-on, so students have the chance to um, engage in um, internships and a lot of um, uh, residency programs, a lot of community service. On campus, students have the um, opportunity to work uh, in the studio. As you can see, I'm currently in the studio. I'm kidding, um, but I wish. Um, so students have the opportunity to really work with a lot of hands-on filming. Um, so once they graduate from Northwestern, students have a lot of experience um, versus any other uh, program where you you know, you graduate and you still have to build up that experience. Um, so that's a plus for us. We do have um, concentrations and students can also um, get minors and certificates. Um, like Maryam said from Georgetown University, we do have um, a minor with them, which is uh, media and politics. Uh, we do have media industries and technologies for journalism. And we have certificates ranging from strategic communication, civic engagement, um, and we have our four plus one dual degree program in journalism, which is a great addition. Um, our application will open September 1st. So if you're interested, this is when you wanna check out um, uh, uh, Common App and uh, fill out the, start your application. I always recommend early action for students because when you apply early action, you compete against a much smaller pool of applicants versus a regular decision. So my recommendation for students is always to consider early action. It just gives you a much better chance. Um, so that takes place in November 1st. Our regular decision is January 1st and for transfer applications, it's March 15th. So if you're anywhere in the world or locally and you're looking at transferring and getting a degree in journalism or communications, um, we, we, we start taking those applications um, March 15th. Um, another thing that I recommend for students, if you're not sure, if you're interested, um, and you're still kind of deciding between universities, I highly recommend our pre-college programs. We've just finished uh, two pre-college programs. Uh, students were able to produce films, uh, produce scripts within a two week period. And it really gives students a taste of what courses would be like um, at Northwestern University. I will uh, have another pre-college program coming up in the fall. So stay tuned for that. 
all of the information is on our website. So I will uh, put the link for our admissions website in the chat box. And please feel free to reach out to us and contact us if you have any questions at all. Um, we're here to support and we're here to answer all your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Hanan. Next up, University of Calgary, we have Ms. Jana Alakor. She's Student Life and Awards Coordinator. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jacqueline, for that introduction. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. So today I will give a very brief overview of our program at the University of Calgary in Qatar. Um, and I'll also be talking about the admissions requirements. Um, so about the University of Calgary in Qatar, uh, we're actually um, the only Canadian university in Qatar and the country's exclusive provider of bachelor's um, and master's of nursing. Um, so the bachelor's of nursing um, regular track, which we call the BNERT program, um, is a four-year program that prepares you uh, to work in patient care, community health, administration, research, um, health and wellness education, and um, also it prepares you if, you if you're thinking of moving on to uh, graduate studies, which we also offer on campus, as I mentioned. Okay, so we also have a foundations program. Um, if you require upgrading uh, your, um, your skills in either English or science. So I'll explain that in a little bit, but let's talk about uh, just general requirements for the BNERD program. Um, so if you are either in an independent or private school in Qatar, you can apply, but the, the um, subjects that we focus on um, in year 12 are English, math, biology, and chemistry. So those are the four really important subjects that we look at and we look at your grades for admission. Um, and also you need at least an 80% um, average in all four of those um, for you to be considered uh, at the University of Calgary in Qatar. So that's for you to enter into directly into our BNIR program. Um, and also, as you can see on the slide over here, uh, the other requirement we have other than you sending us your transcripts so that we can see those uh, grades for those four important subjects I just mentioned, um, we need to look at your IELTS score. So you need to get a minimum of a six on your IELTS to uh, qualify for direct entry into the PNERD program. Okay, um, but uh, we do have some students that don't quite get uh, the six on the aisles. Um, so we do have a foundations program, which is a one year program uh, where you're able to work on either your English or science skills, depending on um, where you fall short a little bit on your on your application. Um, and to be honest, um, in my experience as well, being at the University of Calgary, I've seen our students grow so much uh, while taking their foundations year. Um, there are intensive courses uh, that they take throughout the year in English. So you, even yourself, if you apply and you end up in the foundations year, it's going to benefit you so much throughout your uh, time at university and also, of course, afterwards in your career. Um, so uh, a little bit about, um, oh, before I go into uh, the program, just let me mention that the applications are open from October until April 1st. So this, this is our application window um, every year and the new academic year begins in September. So a little bit about what it's like to um, study nursing. You're gonna be studying all the theory in, your, in the classroom, but we also have um, something on campus called the simulation lab. Um, I don't know if you have been, well, I think most of you have seen what hospital rooms look like and what hospitals look like. Um, if you can imagine that it's just exactly like a copy paste of a hospital room, we have a facility like that that's on campus where our students can safely practice their nursing skills and get um, valuable feedback before they go off and do their um, clinicals at Hamad Hospital. So our students are actually doing rotations at Hamad Hospital from their first year. So throughout their four years of um, doing their uh, nursing degree, they're um, getting practice in the simulation lab, but they're also doing real work at um, Hamad Hospital. 
Um, and also I will send um, uh, the email, the university email um, right now in the chat. If you have any questions about uh, nursing, about the application process, please feel free um, to get in touch with that. I just sent that right now. And um, thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Jana. Next up, oh, where'd it go? It jumped. Okay, oh, here we go, Cordy. Uh, Wild Cornell Medical College, and we have Ms. Claudia Mahayascu. Thank you for organizing this, and thank you for, uh, to our viewers for um, showing an interest in developing their career path during this very, very difficult uh, time of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I'm Claudia Mihescu. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at Wild Cornell Medicine, Qatar. And as can be very easily inferred from the name of our institution, we offer a medical program. More specifically, it is an integrated six-year medical program. The reason why we say integrated is because it is structured as um, a sequence of two curricula, the pre-medical curriculum and the medical curriculum. During the first two years of the uh, pre-medical curriculum, our students typically learned undergraduate level courses in biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and a couple of uh, writing intensive uh, English seminars. They then proceed to the medical curriculum where they learn the uh, foundational medical sciences and their clinical courses. Once they complete the programs, our students receive the Cornell University Doctor of Medicine or MD degree, which is a professional graduate degree. Sometimes we do receive questions regarding our institution, uh, specifically whether uh, we offer also a dentistry program or a pharmacy program, and the answer is no, we only offer this integrated six-year medical program. With regard to the process, we only have one entry per year and that is for the fall semester. So the next entry will be for students um, coming in fall 2021. Our online applications typically open in mid to late September and uh, the deadline to submit an online application, including a personal statement is February 1st. And I do want to mention that our deadlines are firm. So we encourage our applicants to start early in order to make sure they are able to fill out all of the different sections and uh, submit their applications on time. The next deadline they need to be mindful of is March 1st. And uh, that's the deadline for submitting all of the documents required in order to complete a file. And those documents are high school transcripts, uh, reference letters, standardized test results, a passport copy and photograph, as well as an application fee. Depending on the high school program a student is following, uh, you may also need to submit uh, additional documents. Once the file is complete, it is forwarded to the Committee on Admissions for their review, and they may decide to select this candidate for an interview. If the candidate is selected for an interview, uh, he or she must participate in this process in order to be uh, considered for admission further. Very briefly, I would like to discuss our four-year medical curriculum, which represents the last four years of our six-year program. The reason why I will not go into details is the fact that as recent high school graduates, uh, you will not be able to apply directly into this entry path. This uh, path is specifically designed for uh, college or university students who have already completed their undergraduate degree or who will be completing their degree in the year when they seek admission. There are some different requirements, but the application opens around the same, uh, at the same time and the deadline to submit an online application and the required documents is a lot earlier on December 15, 2020. Uh, once our students get their degrees, that's not the end of the journey for them. And I do want to say that if you are considering a career in medicine, uh, please note that this truly is a lifelong learning type of profession. Um, our students' next step is to pursue their residency. And we have been very lucky to have students matching into very competitive residency programs, either here in Qatar at Ahmad Medical Corporation Hospitals, or in uh, the US at institutions such as Case Western, New York Presbyterian, uh, Johns Hopkins, or Virginia Commonwealth. Um, 
So if, if you're interested to know more about our requirements, timelines, and other details, please do refer to our website. I believe the um, uh, contact is on the screen. And if you're interested in a career in medicine, we do look forward to receiving your applications starting in September for entry for fall 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Our last panelist is Melissa Deschamp, and she's the Regional Educational Advising Coordinator for Ed Education USA in Qatar. Hi, and welcome everyone. Thank you all for having me on the panel today. Um, so as mentioned, I am the shortened title name, REAC for the Middle East and North Africa, which means I work with the Education USA advising centers throughout the region. Here in Qatar, we do have two wonderful advisors who um, can assist any students looking for information about U.S. higher education. So Education USA is a global network. It is a network of the U.S. State Department. Um, we are located in over 170 countries with uh, more than 430 centers um, throughout the globe. And our primary focus when we're talking about students is really helping students identify, um, decide, and prepare for um, studying in their best fit university. So we, pr we promote all accredited U.S. higher education institutions, so we don't necessarily um, focus on any particular schools as long as they're accredited and it is a school that would be a good fit for you, we will work with you to apply and succeed there. All of the information, advising resources that are provided are provided free of charge. Um, and in this virtual environment now, most of the information that you would be looking for can either be found on the main Education USA website or on the Education USA Qatar Facebook page. So if you have questions about where to study, what programs um, you can look for or apply to, you can start to define what your priorities are so that as you're making those decisions, you can really look at the options you have with your particular preferences. Um, again, the, the schools that you apply to should be really about a fit for you. So even though maybe you've had relatives or friends go to a particular institution and they're great, they may not necessarily be the right place for you. You want to think about the program, the types of courses, specifically the focus areas. Are there research opportunities? What are the career options? What are the extracurricular um, experiences that you can also gain from the program that you choose. So again, um, we also work with U.S. higher education institutions and facilitate school visits locally when travel permits, um, also university fairs, whether they're virtual or in person, and also help connect local governments and ministries to identify schools to work with, to um, promote locally, and really encourage the students to fit um, and fill the labor market needs. So if you are at any one of the five steps that we have listed here, um, you are free to reach out and get guidance from our advisors. Again, you can email and the email is mentioned there, or you can reach out to us through the Facebook page. Most of the events that we host ourselves or that are hosted through the region are shared on the Facebook event section. So please feel free to check that out. And also you can refer to a lot of the recorded webinars, videos, and resource links that um, will answer many of your questions. Again, I'll be here to answer questions generally. So uh, feel free to add them to the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, I think it's time now to open the floor for the questions and answers session. And we have a lot of interesting questions coming in, so we will address them one by one. Um, I will start with, well, Cornell, because uh, we have a number of questions coming, uh, coming for you, Claudia. All Is right. there a late application for well, Cornell? Uh, is math uh, necessary for someone to apply? Uh, and what are the requirements for applications and someone can reapply for the fall semester 2020? 
a lot of questions for you. Okay, um, so uh, the application is closed for fall 2020. We have our class, so we will not be accepting any more applications. Um, with regard to the requirements, as I mentioned earlier, if somebody is interested in applying for fall 2021, the requirements are uh, to submit uh, your uh, high school transcripts, typically the last three years, so 10, 11, and the first semester of grade 12. If the student is still in high school, if they have completed, of course, they would have to submit the uh, final transcript. A minimum of two reference letters. One of them would have to be for uh, from the uh, high school counselor or principal, and the second one for from a science or mathematics teacher. Standardized test results are required, SAT or ACT, as an academic test. And then for demonstrating language proficiency, the TOEFL or the IELTS test. And um, passport copy and photograph. Those are easy as, as and an application key. As I said during the presentation, depending on the educational program the student follows, he or she may be required to submit additional documents. For example, students in the IB curriculum may need to submit their predicted IB grades. Students who are in the British curriculum will need to submit their IGCSE results and um, AS level results, predicted A level grades. Uh, students who have already taken APs in the American curriculum uh, will be required to submit their uh, official AP results. Thank you, Claudia. And uh, there is that? another question that is coming in for you. Um, what about scholarships and financial aid? Mm -hmm. So very similarly to the other institutions in Education City, we do offer the, I mean, Qatar Foundation offers financial aid for interested uh, uh, students, for students who are admitted into the program and are not able to cover the tuition cost. Uh, scholarships, um, as, you, as you are aware, the, um, a new student is not uh, able to apply for a, a QF scholarship in the first uh, year of their studies. One has to have completed at least two semesters of uh, studies at one of the um, universities in Education City in order to be able to apply for a scholarship. We do have some scholarships um, at our institutions. It's called, it's called Leaders in Medicine, but they are uh, very limited and the process is very, very competitive. For, for Thank you so much, Claudia. Scholarship. Thank you very much. Um, the next one is about the College of North Atlantic, HIBA. Do you offer scholarships in um, CNAQ? And if so, yes, how uh, someone can apply? So basically, for the moment, uh, we don't offer. Uh, before we do, uh, we did offer. Uh, actually, it's from uh, it was from Education Above All, but since now we don't have any updates from them, so we at the moment we don't have any scholarships to offer. Thank you. And there is another question for you, Hiba. Uh, you mentioned that the tuition fee is twenty thousand Qatari rials. Is yes. it for a whole year or quarterly? Uh, so uh, basically, the for uh, the tuition fees for yearly is twenty thousand rials, Qatari rials, and uh, by semester is uh, ten thousand rials for all programs. Okay. Um, another question uh, about about you, uh, Hiba, uh, is about the visa requirements. Can a male student get the student visa after or before becoming 21 years old? Apparently uh, the person is under family visa. So basically the, we don't uh, do student visa. The, the, the applicant should have, should have his own visa. We don't offer that. Thank you, Hiba. No problem. Um, about Well Cornell, I will go back to Claudia. We have a lot of questions about you. Uh, what is the basis for financial aid? And financial if you, aid. If you take also standardized tests uh, right now with the COVID-19. So financial, the financial aid application process and the admission application process are completely separate. So it, it doesn't really, financial aid doesn't depend on uh, meeting the requirements for admission. Um, 
Um, I think, can you repeat the first part of the question? Um, yes, yeah, sorry. What is the basis of the financial aid okay. uh, for so Well Cornell? Yeah. So it's a need-based financial aid. The student would have to uh, demonstrate the financial need through a lot of financial documents that they will be submitting, not to Well Cornell. As I said, it's not a financial instrument that we offer, but rather an instrument that Qatar Foundation offers. So they would need to apply to Qatar Foundation, to their financial aid instrument submit a lot of documents that demonstrate the family is unable to meet the burden of financial aid. And Qatar Foundation um, decides whether they want to offer financial aid to the students. Thank you, Claudia. Um, I want to call Dr. Hanan. What is the minimum IB score required for acceptance to Northwestern? Okay, so a little bit about our, um, just briefly about our requirements. Our approach to applications is holistic, so we don't have minimum scores. I will say, though, it is very competitive. Um, when we approach applications, we look at everything in the application. So um, we do require your IELTS, your standardized test, ACT, SAT, your transcripts, um, recommendation letters, for, two recommendation letters from your teachers, one from your counselor, um, and your uh, high school diploma. Now, I can give you the average uh, scores for the previous class and for the current class. Uh, however, please note that these scores, we've, we've accepted people who are higher and we've accepted uh, students with lower scores. So for IB, we've, uh, we've accepted, average has been 34. Um, our IELTS average is a seven, um, ACT is 23, SAT um, is 1100, sorry, 1300. So um, with, these, with that said, again, we have accepted st students with higher and students with lower. Um, we, we look at your personal statement, we look at your recommendation letters, we look at your uh, extracurricular activities, um, initiatives you've had, uh, thing, uh, clubs, organizations you've joined. We like to see a full student, not just numbers. So please be careful with your, I mean, look at it as a full academic profile. We like to see a student with a perspective, a student who wants to contribute to their community. Um, now, given the situation with the pandemic, we have gone test optional. Um, for the next academic year. So that only applies to your ACT or SAT. So if you have an exceptional score and you really want to submit it and you think it would help your profile, you can go ahead and send it in with your application. But if you don't think it's going to help your profile, you do not have to send it in. Um, it's still a requirement and every, all the other application material, materials are required. Um, I saw a question about um, personal statements and what do we look for in personal statements. I've, I've just finished a course on personal statements yesterday with students, uh, workshopping them and everything. Um, we will have more personal statement workshops in the fall, so stay tuned. I will be posting those. I usually run those for students. Um, we look to, it's, it, your personal statement has to be to the point. We want you to show us what you're passionate about um, and not just tell, you know, telling us. Uh, we like to see character and, you know, reach out to me. The email address is um, in the chat box um, and I'll be happy to workshop an essay with you um, if you're interested. Okay. Dr. Hanan, uh, you partially answered one of the questions, which is uh, what do you look for in the common app? And there's also another question related to you and Northwestern about the scholarships and financial aid. Okay, um, so Northwestern University is need blind. So uh, we do give out scholarships. We do, there is financial aid. It is uh, obviously scholarships are gonna be very competitive. Um, they're merit based. However, your financial aid is need based um, and we are a need blind school. So what you do is you have to fill out the application and you have to be very patient with it. Um, it is a long process. It's a frustrating process for a lot of students, uh, but we're here to support. Um, you just have to submit all the documents that are required in the application and, and go from there. So yes, Thank there you. is.
financial aid and there are scholarships. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hanan. Uh, I want to go back to uh, Hiba and Jana because we have some questions related to uh, some of our viewers who are interested in health sciences. So if someone does not have taken math in 11th and 12th grade, uh, would they be able to apply either with the College of North Atlantic or University of Calgary? Uh, so basically for, for, the, for College of North Atlantic, if you don't have math in 12th and 11th, just bring your high school transcript of 12th as well as the high school transcript of uh, 10th as well, if you have math in 10th. And uh, um, how about Calgary, University of Calgary? Yes. So for the University of Calgary, if um, you haven't taken it in year 11, uh, that might be an issue. Uh, uh, but if you haven't taken it in year 12, if you haven't taken math in year 12, um, or if you are in an independent school here in Qatar and you've taken foundations math instead of um, you know the regular track, um, if you've taken the found math at the foundations level, you still need to do math uh, in the foundation year. Um, or if you haven't done math at all, then you will also take your math in the foundation year. So there's a possibility that you need you can get accepted, um, but you really have to show your strength in other parts of your application. Thank you, Jana. I have a question going back to Jana and to Claudia. Uh, from some of our viewers who are um, under Indian curriculum, uh, what are the requirements for admissions in the College of North Atlantic or in Well Cornell? For Well Cornell, the requirements are the same as uh, I've already mentioned them. All of the students, regardless of their curriculum, must meet those. So they would have to submit, again, their high school transcripts, um, a minimum of two reference letters. I've already mentioned what those are, the standardized test, passport copy and photograph. We don't have any cutoff scores, if that was the question, for any programs, but the admissions process is very competitive. And uh, does it make a difference for Well Cornell if a student has studied until grade 10 in Doha and then grade 11 and 12 uh, abroad with regards to your admissions? No, everybody is welcome to apply regardless where they studied or what program they studied. Thank you. We have also a lot of questions and I would like to engage um, all of our panelists um, in regards to the SAT scores and, and IELTS and uh, CETs. Um, given the situation, are you planning to waive them off? Or what is the position of the university in regards to admission in this regard? Hanan, I see you ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we have gone test optional for the next upcoming uh, year, given the uh, situation and the difficulties for students accessing exams and accessing test centers. Um, the only exam that are, we are requiring right now is the IELTS or TOEFL, one, one or the other. Um, so students can send those scores. I mean, that is required to be sent with the application. Um, if they have already taken the ACT or SAT, and again, they feel that the, you know, their score will support their application, we welcome it, but we do not require it. We do, we do not require it. Um, now, I do want to mention to students, because I had uh, had a lot of uh, students reach out the past week and ask, um, so now are you going to be tougher on the other um, application uh, uh, areas um, since we don't have an ACT or SAT. No, we're not going to. Um, we, we still require everything else in the application. Our approach will remain holistic. Um, we understand the, the, you know, the circumstances we're under. Um, it's affected everybody and as, um, you know, as higher institutions, we, we, we're here to support students and make sure that they get to where they need, uh, where they need to. So we're not going to be tougher on your application now that you don't have. It's not a punishment. <laughs> so well, it's yeah. a very interesting discussion, but we need to be mindful about time. So I want to give the opportunity to Samantha and Melissa 
to comment on, on the requirements for the applications right now. So before we, we conclude, just to hear your voice as well. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to say that um, for us, uh, we really believe that there are a lot of students who have great uh, potential and can offer an awful lot to um, our universities that uh, are offering their programs. Um, in SUNY, the admissions uh, procedure is very simple. Um, I know a lot of students who did not do well in their last year of high school, um, but are great students and have great potential to contribute an awful lot to uh, university courses. Our admissions are, are a high school completion certificate and a 6.0 in IELTS. Um, and certainly uh, support in, in both English and maths for people who maybe don't reach those uh, the levels that are necessary. So I would definitely recommend people to reach out, have a discussion um, and find out how we can help them uh, move forward with their uh, degrees and with their educational journey um, in these very complicated times. There, there are opportunities and, and we're happy to offer them. Thank you, Samantha. Melissa? Yes, and just briefly, I mean, obviously with the current situation and the lack of opportunities to either travel or um, make the students make their way to the U.S., um, there were already many universities that were test optional, at least for the academic testing. Um, that number has increased given the current situation. Um, typically with the English proficiency tests, usually those would still have um, a, a more likelihood to be required because there are options um, now, especially with the Duolingo English test, um, to take some of those tests um, online. So TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, generally you'll see more requirements for that. But again, because of the current situation and not being able to access testing or centers, many universities are sensitive to that reality and are working as best as possible to be flexible. So again, it, it really is university dependent, but there are plenty of opportunities that um, can work for you. Thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, we just passed two minutes after three, so it's time to wrap up. I would like to invite everyone to uh, take the survey. We would like to hear from you, your comments and your thoughts. We do appreciate and value your opinion. Uh, just again to reiterate, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar with all the participants who have registered together with the presentation of, uh, of today's event as well as the contact details of our uh, lovely representatives. I wish to thank you all for joining us. It has been a, a very exciting all-female panel. It was a, a real honor for us to have you on board. Uh, please be mindful that we will continue our webinar series throughout the summer. Next week, we have our Arabic webinar for our viewers. And uh, of course, we welcome you and you, we invite you to continue interacting with the representatives of admissions for the universities you are interested in. Uh, there is a lot of work still that needs to be done, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.